find the spell guardian. Greetings, fellow maker. We're back from Dragon Con. It was a lot of fun. And now I can catch up on the build series for the sweeper bot. In today's video, I'll show you how I made Sweepy's robot head. There's always compromises with cosplay, but with this robot head design, I wanted to turn it into a helmet that stayed lightweight, was easy to take on and off, stayed pretty breathable, and still had pretty good visibility. The first part of Sweepy's robot head was making the tiny buck for the front visor, which will get vacuformed in plastic. The visor started its life as a 3D model in the program Maya. I guessed on the scale, thinking the height should be about 105 millimeters. I wasn't convinced I got the scale right. I've made this mistake before. So I exported the model as an OBJ file and opened the visor in Peppacora Designer. This is a paper craft program that's super handy for cosplay. The visor got unfolded, which automatically adds attachment tabs. The default scale needed to be updated to my height measurements in Maya, and I also turned on the edge IDs so I could know where to glue the tabs back together. I exported the Peppacora file as a PDF and then printed the PDF at actual size with no scale to fit options turned on. I printed the file on paper cardstock and after cutting out the pieces, I scored and pre-bent all the crease lines. I just used normal PVA glue, which works great for quickly attaching paper together. This didn't need to be perfect, I'm just checking the scale of the little nose visor. Surprisingly, the scale turned out great. I could have added some resin and fiberglass to this paper piece to use as my vacuform buck, but instead I went with a 3D print of my Maya file. I exported my file as an STL and then imported that into the Slicer program Cura. I used ABS filament with super thick walls and a ton of support since I didn't want my print to deform during the vacuform process. This was probably overkill, but I wanted to play it safe. All the print lines were sanded down. I even went so far as to wet sand with 400 grit, but there was still a little bit of a texture and some low spots that needed filling. I sprayed on two coats of primer and wet sanded again, all the way up to 1000 grit. Thin clear plastic picks up every imperfection during the vacuform process. So I did my best to get a smooth finish with some Tamiya White Fine Primer and even more sanding. We like using PETG plastic for our vacuform visors. We have a video on making the little vacuform setup as well as other videos on this process at a link below. With just the top heating element on, set to broil, the plastic took only about a minute to heat up. Then with the vacuum suction running, I pressed the plastic onto the buck. After cooling, the buck was popped free which is easier if the design doesn't have any underhangs. The 3D printed buck didn't appear to take any damage from the heated plastic. I used some metal binder clips and wire to create a hanging system for the visor since it needed to be dyed blue. We have a visor tinting video that I'll also link below that does go into more detail, but the quick breakdown is polyester dye mixed into a pot of water that's on a heating element heated to around 140 degrees Fahrenheit for the PETG plastic. With a separate container of cold water standing by, the visor was dunked into the hot dye bath for five minutes. My water was almost at 150 degrees, so only after one dunk, the visor picked up a ton of color. The visor then gets washed off in cool water. I was happy with the color, knowing that once it was in the headpiece, it would be less transparent with no backlighting. The 3D print became a handy reference for the front head template. After some modifications, I transferred the paper to 6mm foam, cutting seam trenches on the inside. The seam was glued together with contact cement and cleaned up on the rotary tool. My plastic visor had a bit of a tapered edge, so I cut in an angled groove around the inside of the headpiece. The visor slots into place from the back with a little bit of effort. Hot glue filled in the trenches and then I carefully heat sealed the foam. I should have done this before adding hot glue, but oh well. With the base shape figured out, I created templates for the side vent things, adding extra template material with some tape. The vents were cut from 6mm foam with some corners cut at an angle. This way the foam keeps the angle when glued together. More foam hinges are cut from the back and the piece is test fit in place. Wherever I have to force foam into place, I like to use contact cement for its instant and strong bond. 
I like to use CA glue for its few seconds of working time as I wiggle a piece into the right spot. With the head front complete, I can now think about how I'm going to see out of this thing. The view from the side vents is pretty good and can be extended by cutting out some side flaps. Rivet details were added with a sanding drum on my rotary tool. For the chin piece, I created a template by figuring out the front strip. After hot gluing the shape together and holding it in place with some tape, I traced out the side pieces. These side panels have a chamfer, so I angled all the cuts except for the one attaching to the head. Sometimes I'm too impatient to wait for contact cement to set, so I used super glue to attach these parts together and then just cleaned up the seams. After some heat sealing, it looks pretty great and can be permanently glued to the head. I traced out the rough shape for the side head panels with scrap newspaper and then finalized the design on some cardstock. More foam was used with all vertical cuts and a few hinges cut for the sharp angles. My angles were far from perfect, so I used contact cement to force the piece into shape. A quick template helped with the right angle for the top handle thing, as well as the strap for the back. To add some extra thickness to the back design, I glued on another piece of foam with more rivet details. There's a tall handle strap that is going to be pretty bendy with 6mm foam. I could reinforce this with some hard, thin plastic like styrene or even some wire, but I just left it. TNT Cosplay Supplies foam dowels came to the rescue for the tube details. I picked out some sizes, cut them at angles, and test fit them together. The ends of the tubes needed a taper, so I marked off the edge with tape and used a belt sander, which worked pretty well. The tube needed some grooves and was supposed to be a bit bigger, so instead of cutting the grooves into the dowel, I glued on 2mm foam strips, tacking them in place with super glue. After attaching the segments together and test fitting, the tubes are glued to the head. For the sweeper bot's eyes, I could have harvested parts from a flashlight, but I wanted specific sizes and only needed one LED per eye. I chose to go with PVC pipe inserts, which were cut on the bandsaw and cleaned up with some sandpaper. Luckily, I had some scrap acrylic plastic in green and blue for the lenses. The interior of the pipes were measured and, you know how I hate cutting out circles by hand? I then cut the circles on the laser cutter. After peeling away the protective paper, the lenses were test fit and I could start thinking about the lights. We have a bunch of these little twist-on LEDs, which are crazy bright and that seemed to be a good size for the robot eyes. The lights needed to be kept in the right orientation, so I laser cut some foam inserts, which snug the lights inside the PVC tubes. The lights are still super bright, but I'll deal with that later. With the eyes figured out, I could start designing the housing. For the front PVC pipe holders, I wanted a floor mat thickness of foam with a circle insert to snug the pipes temporarily in place. So I laser cut some foam fittings. This way I can keep the pipes, lenses, and electronics separate when I paint the robot headpiece. With the position for the front eye plates glued together, I made a template that got transferred to 6mm foam. The foam thickness added a bit of a ledge, which I think looks cool, so I left it. Before attaching the second eye cover, I wanted to make sure I had room for the LED wires. I decided to make the connection that attached to the head hollow, so the wires can sneak through. After the back is glued together, I could figure out where these eye stalks would attach. The smaller eyes were glued straight to the head, and then I fit in some foam strips for the eye stalks, covering up any gaps with scrap foam. The back of the eye stalks were left completely open for electronic access. I figured any wires showing would look totally intentional, since it's a robot. Speaking of wiring, I needed a place to store the electronics. The helmet was a bit front heavy, so I wanted to add the extra weight of batteries to the back. The little foam recess would hopefully extend out far enough from the back of my head to fit the electronics. And that's the whole robot head shape! The PVC pipes and visor were removed for painting, but here is how they looked all together. While the helmet was being painted, which I'll go over in another video, I decided to frost the lenses to help diffuse some of the light. I thought about using circles of parchment paper, which totally works great for light diffusion. But instead, I just sanded the inside of the lenses with 2000 grit sandpaper, which is fine enough to not leave noticeable scratches behind. 
After sanding, the light became less eye-piercingly directional and caught more of the lens color. The last touch I added after paint was to cover the eye and forehead areas of my face. Instead of adding more non-breathable foam, this plastic mesh helped obscure my eye area and still had great airflow. Oh, I also added some little foam dowel antennas that have wire in them for support. Here is a completed sweeper bot headpiece. My vision was pretty great. I could see in front and below, which is super helpful for navigating stairs. The only thing I lost was my peripheral vision. I think I accomplished my goals. The helmet is still really lightweight. My vision is better than other costumes I've had. It's pretty good. I kept a lot of the design open, so there's a lot of really good airflow. The visor doesn't fog up at all. And I can easily slide the helmet on and off. It's thanks to Bill that the electronics got done in time for Dragon Con. The videos for the eye lights and also the voice modulator and front lights are already out, so you can go give those a watch. Thank you so much, Bill. The lights look awesome. The handy head form I used is of Bob from I Like To Make Stuff. We did a life casting video on his channel and definitely go check that out if you wanna see how to make your own. This form's a little bit bigger than my head, but that was okay. I knew if I fitted the helmet to this shape that it would definitely fit on my head with a little bit of room for the electronics and the padding. Thank you so much for watching. We have more SweeperBot videos coming out, so make sure to subscribe to catch them all. I'll see you in the next video, Guardian. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.